Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree, and welcome to the assembly video for our jointed Mrs. Scarecrow. Now I just got done putting together Mr., and he is uh, adorable. And I think with the right patterns, he can also be a little frightful if you catch my drift. Um, typically, when we release a jointed figure, you guys uh, always seem to want to um, create another one to complement it, whether it be male or female or vice versa. So uh, we kind of um, beat you to it. And we have a Mrs. Scarecrow, and we're gonna begin by, just like before, just like with all of our uh, jointed figures, we're gonna start by putting together the various limbs, okay? So here we have, I'm gonna start with the legs first. And this is the main part here, okay? And on top of that, we're putting this little burlap uh, pattern on like this, okay? So let's begin. Get your glue going here. And the process is gonna be the same exact process for the other leg, minus the fact that it's essentially mirrored. Okay. And my advice with this is to just match it up with whatever focal points you can see. Like I'm looking at the bottom of the leg here where the, uh, where the straw is gonna be. And obviously you wanna make sure that you match up the little holes where the brads are gonna go. Now, uh, I did a lot of inking on this. <clears throat> With this one here, I took a little bit of a, a dark brown and I used that. Next, we're gonna put this beautiful pattern piece on there. And as you can see, the little straw is gonna go in there just like a little puzzle piece, okay? And I'll show you that in just a moment. But first, let's get this going. Okay. And these are gonna be, I'm sure these are gonna be, I have a feeling that you guys might be making a pair of these. Well, not just the, the boy and the girl version, but maybe even a version, like a creepy version for Halloween. Because obviously, as you know, scarecrows have become pretty popular among the, uh, the Halloween crowd. Okay, so next we're gonna take this little piece of straw, it's all connected and we'll get that glued into place. You can see exactly where it goes. It's gonna fit in there just like a little puzzle. And I also hit this with a little bit of a reddish brown. Just pop that into place, try to line that up as accurately as you can. And then finally, well, not quite finally, but almost finally, we have the little sole of the shoe. I'm just gonna use a few little tiny dots of glue for that. And that's gonna go right flush at the very bottom you can see where, where the heel kind of starts. Just make sure that's nice and flush with the very, very bottom of that. That looks great. And then of course, as we did with the male version, we've got this little hot dog looking piece. And that's gonna go right here. Just like that. Okay, there we go. So one leg is done. I'm gonna pop that underneath my mat and let that dry nice and flat while we begin working on the other leg. Same process. Okay. So we are getting close here to fall. It is uh, August 10th or 11th. We still got about a month before the official first day of fall. I think the meteorological fall starts at the end of the month, I think September 1st. And uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff going on here in Dreaming Tree World as we prepare to say hello to a new member of our family. And Liesl is kind of secretly hoping that, well, it's not so much a secret, but Secretly hoping that maybe we have a Halloween baby. <laughs> kind of don't want to miss Halloween, but hey, if, uh, if that's how it turns out, then so be it. But And popping that into place. 
And for those of you wondering if it's a boy or a girl, we are having a boy. We had a, we had <clears throat> an unfortunate circumstance last December where our baby didn't make it past 17 weeks and fortunately for us it didn't really stop us and we're uh, getting close now and for those of you wondering what we're going to name the baby we're actually going to name it Peyton P-A-Y after the great Walter I wanted to go with that name because uh, he's one of my idols. If you guys are not familiar with Walter Payton, he was one of the hardest working. Oh, almost forgot the hot dog. Where's my hot dog here? This is what happens when I get chatty. Okay, hello, Mr. Hot Dog, where'd you go? That little hot dog tried to escape. Anyway, uh, yeah, Walter Payton, number 34. I played for the Chicago Bears was one of the hardest working guys in football. And if I, well, I guess for one, I would never be that athletic, but I really appreciated his work ethic and um, what he stood for. So anyway, all right, so that was the legs. Um, there's only one part to it where the male version had two segments. There's only one segment here. Uh, next, we're gonna do the uh, shoulders and the elbow. And it's just these two pieces. It's going to go on like this. So let's get our glue going. It's just, just these two. Uh, we don't have anything else that goes on there, no patches or anything like that. So a lot of exciting stuff going on here behind the scenes. And thanks to you guys, we continue to grow because you guys spread the word. I'm very appreciative of that. It's like uh, doing everything we can to put out the best products out there. And from, based on all of the testimonials and reviews, I'd say we're doing a pretty good job. So thank you to everyone. Okay, so we're doing the same thing with this one. And there you have it, just like that. So these are ready to go, I believe. Yes, they are. We'll put these underneath the mat. Okay, and next let's work on the hands and the arms. Okay, so each one is gonna to go together the same way. We'll start with this, this Cricut or lime green color and we'll put the pattern right on top of that. Go easy with the glue here. It's a pretty delicate little piece. You don't need a lot. Okay, and we're gonna match this up. I'm gonna use the top part of this where the hole is as my initial focal point. Just to make sure I got that set right. And then the rest of it should pretty much follow the shadow element, the main layer. Okay. And then next, we're going to put the burlap part down for the hands. And again, another small little piece. So go easy on the glue. You cake this thing with glue, you're going to be sitting there for, for days and days waiting for things to dry. So go easy. Less is more when it comes to pretty much anything we do. Okay, and then we have this little piece of straw, nice and easy, just a few little dots throughout, just like that. And that's gonna go right on there like a little puzzle, just like that. Okay, and then of course, we've got a lot of hot dogs in, in these projects, on these scarecrows. So let's get this little hot dog in place. Okay, and it's gonna go like this, right there. Just line that up as accurately as you can. There we go. Okay, so that is one of the hands. We'll put that underneath the mat and we'll do the same thing with the other side. So it's funny, I learned a new term in the last few days. I guess nesting is the term. The, the actual definition is the period where there's you know a few weeks or a few months left before a baby arrives and the mother gets this burst of energy and she starts cleaning everything, <laughs> getting, getting ready for the baby. And I guess because I'm basically um, 
you know, only 50.1% testosterone. <clears throat> um, I took it upon myself. I, I didn't actually, I, I've been wanting to kind of deep clean the house and organize things. I've got an entire storage area down in the basement where I keep all my props. And there's just been props down there that I haven't used in years. And I also want to make some room to store some other things that are more useful, like um, like food, you know, things of that nature. And I ended up with an entire dumpster full of junk. So it was very rewarding, very cleansing, I guess. And uh, almost for the first time since I've lived here for about 10 years, I can say that the house is pretty much hyper organized. So anyway, yeah, so I've been, I guess someone told me I'm, I'm nesting, but I just think that my OCD is kicking, kicking into overdrive and I'm just uh, trying to get organized. So, okay, there's the other hand all done. Good, good, good. All right, so now you can start focusing on uh, the main part of our little scarecrow here. And there is one element that is gonna get pop dotted later and that's these little leaves with this sunflower and this center little, uh, well, the center of the flower. Okay, so we've got that. And then we also have this cute little bow. Okay, that's two layers just so that it's not so uh, delicate. And then we've got another sunflower for that. So we'll leave that alone for now and just focus on these elements here. Okay, and we're going to start off and we've got got two of these just to make it nice and thick these are identical there's really no difference on any of these or either of these so we're just going to glue these right on top of the other okay and we've got some little delicate areas up here that we need to make sure we get some glue on and don't worry if you don't get everything glued down properly I'll show you a little tip here on what you can do if you have any little areas that are maybe lifting up Doing little circles there at the bottom. There we go. And I'd say that was pretty good, Leo. Okay, just line that up as accurately as you can. I'm using the little hole at the top as my initial guide. And as I work my way down, taking a look at the little cutouts where the hair is, just making sure that everything is lined up as accurately as possible. And then just press down. That is perfect. That looks good. Okay, and next I'm going to take this layer, and this layer is going to go on like so. <clears throat> okay, so this is our main pattern that we're going to put down next, and a little bit less surface area to cover on this one, but almost identical to the last piece. So, again, do your best to. Oh, got a little piece that didn't come out there. Do your best to try to get glue on as much surface area as possible here. Okay, and then I'm doing circles down here because there's a lot of circular angles, I guess you could say, and it just makes the most sense, especially if I want to be efficient and quick with this. Okay, again, starting at the top, lining up the little circle, looking at the head now, and then the hair. I'll lift this up and just make any little minor adjustments that I see fit. Uh, the little tip that I was going to mention is grab a scrap piece of paper like this and just throw a little bit of glue right on the very corner. And if you have any little areas like this one here that maybe isn't glued down completely, just paint a little glue on it and then press it down. And you can do that pretty much anywhere around the perimeter of this thing. Okay, so that's that. <clears throat> Next, we're going to take and we're going to glue this piece down. Okay, just like that. And you can see how nicely that fits onto the rest of this. Okay. And this is gonna make it nice and thick, nice and sturdy, so that this thing literally could last a lifetime. I mean, I have, um, I have old die cuts, Halloween ones from like, you know, the 40s and 50s that 
have withstood the test of time and they're only a single layer. They do get beat up a little bit, but uh, if those can last this long, obviously these can as well. Uh, there's no reason why they can't. Okay, so let's line that up as accurately as we can. Now you'll notice here that um, there is some stitching on various components of this piece, like right here. And I just actually took a black ballpoint pen and I just went over those little stitch lines with the pen. Um, I find that those don't bleed as much, okay? So you end up with a nicer end result, okay? Next, we're gonna take and put the hair in place. And again, it's just a matter of getting that lined up just like that. Okay, so let's flip this over and begin applying our glue. I feel like this is the ninth time that I've applied glue to this little section, probably is. It's okay. Definitely want it to be top heavy. And now again, we've got a lot of little hair strands here that we need to get at least a little bit of glue on so it stays in place. Don't worry about getting glue on every single little inch of it because we can always, as long as we get it in place, we can always go back and add glue to any of these little individual areas that may need a little extra TLC to keep it in place. But I think that is gonna be more than enough. And again, using that little circular hole at the top, initially, I like to lift it up and hold it in my hand so I can feel the edges. Just to make sure that everything's making good contact and that is perfect. Okay, wonderful. <clears throat> All right, next, we're gonna take and put our hat in place like this. Okay, so we've got our hat there. Let's go ahead and flip that over and apply our glue. And it definitely does not fall yet because I am I'm sweating bullets in here right now. There we go, perfect. Just like that. And we have this little accent piece that goes right there. So let's get that glued down. Nice and easy with the glue on this thin little piece. You don't need a lot. And just line that up to the very bottom of the hat. Like so. So far, so good. Perfect, okay. <clears throat> Next, can put our little apron in place, okay. And these little, you can see that they're these little notches that are cut into this, okay. And these are actually gonna go right here. They should fit right into these little strands of hair. So you know exactly where they need to go, okay. So what I would suggest doing here is applying glue to the little suspenders, this part of the dress, and then just a little bit of glue down at the bottom here. So what I'm gonna do, actually, is just kinda of hold this in place just to get an idea of where to put the glue on this section. And then I'll flip this up real quick. And apply my glue to that and just pop that right into place. Now I forgot to ink the bottom of the skirt here. So I'm just gonna hit it with a little extra red just to kind of give it that little bit of contrast. It's not much of a contrast, but I guess uh, a shadow. It's not really a highlight. I felt that it needed it before we put this piece down. There we go. Okay. Let's get that out of the way and put the rest of this in place. Okay. So this piece is going to go on next, just like this. Okay. You can see that there's a little bit of that still showing. That's why I wanted to get the ink on there. All right. So let's get the glue going on this piece. And there we go. We'll pop that right into place. You can see where the little belt's gonna go. 
use that as a focal point for placement. And of course, I wanna make sure that it stays nice and flush all the way through down to the bottom. Perfect. And we have another layer that goes on top of this just to give this little part some added dimension. So let's get that glued into place. Don't need a lot of glue on that. Keep it nice and thin. And that's gonna go right there, just like that. Okay, so we're kind of getting near the end here. Um, we have a set of patches here that are gonna go right on the dress. And they're gonna go right here. You'll notice that you do have some little markers and it's gonna go right there. You've got a marker there and a marker there here and here. So basically in all four corners, there's a little marker. Okay, so let's flip this over and get our glue going on that. I'm gonna to try to get a little bit of glue on these little nubs, maybe just a little dot, and then I'll hit that with my finger to thin it out so it doesn't go squirting everywhere. Like that, just dab it with your finger. That'll keep it in place nice and flush for you. Okay, and again, use those little markers as your guide. If it's off a little bit, it's nothing in the world. Mostly just put that there so that, you know, you can make it consistent. All right, next, I'm gonna find this piece here. You can see there's this little, this little, uh, this little end that kind of comes off. It looks like it's a little bit uh, out more than the rest of it. That's gonna be your top right. Okay, so let's flip that over and just put a few little dots of glue throughout the back of this. I'll thin that out a little bit. I could tell that it was way too much there. And the little cutouts here, try to match those up with the other stitches on the brown part while also trying to make sure that you keep it centered. <clears throat> that looks great. And then we have this piece, okay? And you can see this little corner. It's a little, uh, it's not straight. Here it looks straight, here it's straight, here it's straight. This one's kind of curved. That's your bottom left. It's gonna go like that. And just add some dots. And we'll pop that right into place. Again, take a look at those little stitches and try to match those up so they look continuous. There we go. Wonderful. Okay, uh, now she also has a few little buttons on her dress. And we've got these little, almost looks like Saturn pieces. And then we've got the little button that's gonna go right on top of the little Saturn piece. Okay, and we want the rings of Saturn on the left and right, and the little buttonholes, like this. Didn't quite get that centered, still looks fine. Okay, and then you can, you'll can you notice that there are a series of little markers here and here to help you with the positioning of our little Saturn, or her buttons, whatever you wanna call them. They're actually buttons. And there are markers there, so use those. Whoops, they're gonna be right where the little suspenders are. There we go. Let's get another button on its planet. Okay. I just realized that if this is being translated into another language, they're gonna be very confused, I think. Maybe not though, we'll see. We'll see if we get any comments. My Saturn comment. Okay, and just a little bit of glue on the back of that. Again, look for the little marker to help you with the positioning. And there we go. Okay, what's left here? We have, um, there are also a few, let me see here. Uh, how many do I have? I have, I should have two buttons. I think I'm missing a button, great. I've got one here, I'm missing one. Okay, we'll have to deal with that in a moment. Um, let's get the facial features installed first. I may need to cut out another little circle here. Uh, but as far as the facial features go, um, I had a little bit of a problem with this last time because, um, well, because this pattern doesn't really show the little uh, markers very well. It's hard to see, they kind of get lost in there. So I'm gonna do my best just to make sure that I have everything lined up properly. It usually helps to start with the nose. So if you too 
have a pattern that isn't really super friendly. You notice that between the eyes is the first little marker. Okay, I'll try to put it in place where I think it is. I just saw it, there it is. Okay, it's right there. And in her case, the nose pretty much goes up and down. Let me see if I can find the other marker based on that. Yep, and there it is. If I hold it at a certain angle, I can see it. So I'm gonna start with the nose because that really kind of sets the tone for where the mouth is gonna be, obviously. So let's get the nose in place. And if you too have a pattern where it's hard to see those markers, I think that if you just kind of eyeball it, you'll be fine. But pardon my, my phone here, I'm using that as my flashlight. And I just wanna make sure that I get this lined up There it is, I think. That'll work. Okay. All right, so we got that. <clears throat> and now just to the left and right, um, right about here, just to the, uh, the right of this little strand of hair, you should see some little markers for where the cheeks go. And I do see them. Although as soon as I put this down, it's gonna be hard to see them again. And I don't really wanna blemish the paper with a pen to mark it, so just do your best. Again, if you're not using this pattern like I am, you'll probably be okay. And it literally, it's just a matter of, there it is. You hit it, hit that, hit it with the light just at the right angle and they'll pop into place. Or the, uh, I should say, the little markers will show up without a problem. Okay, just a matter of getting it at the right angle. There it is, well, there's two of them. That's all that matters. Just get two of them. There we go. That looks good. Okay, so speaking of which, um, again, I can see there is one there and one there. Those I can actually see. I've got these little buttons. There's two of these, and I'm going to have to have to recut one or start looking on the ground for the other one. One's going to go there, and there's another one that goes right about here. So you want to make sure you get that in place, okay? And now, of course, we have the mouth. And the mouth does have, there's kind of like a heart-shaped marker right about there, just below the nose. Okay, so that one's a little bit easier to, to figure out. And let's get some glue on the mouth. Like so. And I am going to use my, my phone here to help me. Here it is. Bam, just like that. Okay, beautiful. Now, I'm also gonna put a little bit of glue right here in this little little section there where we have uh, little holes cut out because I'm gonna take, I put a little bit too much in there. I'm gonna dab that a little bit. I'm gonna take some black rhinestones and just pop them right in there. Give her some eyes that you can actually see. Just like that. Okay, beautiful. All right, so what's left here? We have a bow and a little uh, flower element. And both of those, let's see, that one's popped out of that one's flat. Okay, so we have this, starts off like this. Okay, and what we can do, if you take a dowel, you can take this and flip it over and then place the dowel between your finger and, um, well, place the the leaf between your finger and the dowel. And then you can take it and kind of grab it, pull it towards you about 90 degrees and then push the dowel through. And that's gonna give it a nice little bit of a curve. You can actually even curl it towards you if you want. Okay, I'm gonna curl it back. I'll curl that one back, just like that. Okay, and again, on here, we do have a set of score marks so that you know exactly where this needs to go. There's like two little mountains that go right into these little points here. Okay, so that's how you know where to glue that. And I'm actually just gonna put glue right on this little circular part in the center and then pop that right into place. It's kind of like my little placeholder. Make sure it's nice and straight and press that down into place, just like that. And I'm gonna build this little sunflower. So again, take each of the petals, place them between your finger uh, and the dowel, bring it up about 90 degrees and then run the dowel through, or you could even take and just curl it like so. Actually, this is making it 
look a lot cooler, I think, if I just curl it back towards me. So I'm pinching the very tip, curling it towards me, and it's giving it some nice dimension. We'll do the same thing with the other one, like so. We're gonna glue these two layers on top of each other. And that's gonna go right in there, like that. We'll take this other piece, pop it right on top, but you wanna offset the petals. You don't want the petals right on top of each other. You want, you want to space them out so you can see each one. And then as I'm holding it down, you kind of pull these back a little bit, create some separation between the two layers just to make it look more full like that. And then just a touch of glue in the center for the center of our flower. Pop that right in there. Make sure it's nice and centered, obviously. There you go, beautiful little sunflower. And Throw a little glue right here and get that nice and centered, like so. There we go. That looks great. Okay, just fluff that up a little bit. And then finally, we have our little, our little bow. We've got two layers, again, just to kind of make it a little bit more sturdy. We'll start by applying glue to one of these. Excuse me, fly. Well, again, I live out in the country and I kind of leave this door open sometimes because Pumpkin wants to come in and say hello from time to time and I feel bad, so I leave the door open for him. And of course that invites all kinds of flies and critters and that's okay though. I guess it's better than living in a tent. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna line these two up right on top of the other. Just match them up as accurately as you can. I did hit this with a little bit of ink. It's almost like a sea blue, like a darker blue. There we go, okay. And you'll notice on this guy here that we have a little marker right there. And I'm gonna grab a foam square actually. We're gonna add some dimension to this piece. Flip this over, throw, a oh, that one's cut in half. That was probably done during a previous project. I'll throw one foam square on the back here. Peel that off. And again, using my light, because it's near impossible to see this on that pattern. It's gonna go right there. There we go. Don't forget about that little button. Again, I'm gonna have to go back and cut out another one, I think, because I cannot find it. I'm sure it's somewhere. And then finally, our little flower here. Do the same thing with this. I'm just gonna take and just pinch and curl it towards me. So I'm pinching the very tip between my finger and the dowel and just curling it towards me, like so. There we go. And we'll throw a little dot of glue on the back of this and pop that right in the center of the bow. Just take a look and make sure it's centered. And then of course the center of the flower, nice little dot of glue there. And pop that into place, just like that. Beautiful. All right, so all that's left to do now is grab our brads and put the rest of the pieces together here. And she'll be pretty much all done. Again, don't forget that button. If I, for, if I film this thing and forget about it, I am going to, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Okay, so again, if you, have, um, if you have brads that match the colors, wonderful. If not, you can always paint them with acrylic paint. That's what I do sometimes with these jointed figures. So I'm gonna take my green, which is kind of a dark green. I may end up painting that to make it lighter, uh, but I don't think it really matters too much. Okay, so that's gonna go like that. Remember, this little cutout is gonna be at the top so let's just do this symmetrically so there's no confusion here. I'll put this brad through here, this one through here, and pull those apart. Here we go. And we've got thumbs on the inside, so this one's gonna go here on top. So we're gonna stick the brad through this layer first and then into the existing layer and peel that back. There we go. And one more. Do that and that. There we go. And then finally, the legs are going to go behind, and I have some orange brads to kind of complement 
the little orange highlights that I have on her dress. Almost looks like an apron, actually, now that I think about it. There we go. And the last one. Pop that through and spread that out. And there she is. Beautiful. Look at that. Very cool. And there she is. <laughs> so you can see how they look together. Very cute. There they are. So again, this, this assembly video is just for Mrs. Uh, we have another one for Mr. But again, they look great. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button and join the already 49,000 others that have subscribed to our channel. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I would love to see it. And so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Group, or you can type in this little URL that you see here at the bottom. So I'm super happy with the way that these turned out. I hope you are too. I hope you guys are getting into fall crafts like we are here at Dreaming Tree. And I can't wait to see your version of the Scarecrows. But with that said, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos. And also, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.